welcome to my channel so in this video we're going to look at strength of materials which is also known as mechanics of engineering materials and this is a course and we are starting with stress so the three fundamental areas of engineering as we know of engineering mechanics can be classified into three as we said and the first one that we have will be dynamic so we have the dynamics and we have um, the statics and we have the strength of material which is strength of material which um, could be also termed as the mechanics of enge uh, engineering materials so then um, in this video we are focusing on the strength of material but let's try differentiating between um, the dynamics the statics and the strength of material now these two move together and they focuses on the external forces it focuses on and the external forces but with the strength of materials or with the mechanics of in, uh, materials it focuses on what the internal forces so in this case, let's try deriving some formulas under stress. So stress. Now, when we take stress, which has a symbol, this. Now, for us to know that um, stress is equal to force over the area, which can be also break down as um, Newton over millimeter squared. So as you know, is this, right? Now, for us to know that stress also can be termed as pressure because it has the unit as pressure, which is Newton per millimeter squared. So in this case, when um, stress, we are talking about external forces and internal forces. And with the internal forces, you're trying to resolve them. You need to have some formulas to resolve them. So let's look at that. Now, resolving a force in the x component we will know that in the x component let's assume that ax we're going to have a plus theta and uh, in the b component let's see bx we're going to have b plus theta now let's look at the y component in the y component we will know that with a y we are going to have a sine theta and by we are going to have b sine theta let's take note of this now let's move on to one thing called the moment because in the stresses we are asked to find the moment about a point the sum of moment about a point which is o now as you know that for the formula we know that we are going to sum the forces times their perpendicular distance so we are going to sum the forces of each by the upper perpendicular distance to the force so that is what we should know about it right yes now for purpose of understanding we have question that we are going to take for us to understand so then let's move on to the question now in this question he yeah, asking us to um the rigid bar ABC shown is supported by a pin. Now the key word here is a pin, right? At a bracket A and by a tie at rod one. The tie rod has a diameter of five millimeters and it is supported by a double shear. So we have another key word here, a double shear pin connected at B and D. The pin at the bracket is a single shear connection and with that all pins are seven millimeters in diameter assume that a so they gave us our a here this length to be 600 millimeters and b to be 300 millimeters and h which is this side to be 450 millimeters and they gave us our p to be 900 newton and our theta, which is this theta, 
we're going to have it to be 55 degrees so in this case for us to get this question you need to have your free body diagram which is called the f BD. The free body diagram will help you to find the external stresses or the external forces in the component given and you can resolve the forces, right? So it is very advisable whenever they give you a question, you need to sketch the free body diagram. So with this, I have the free body diagram, which is here. So now with the free body diagram, I didn't introduce the uh, figure. So with A, we know that A is, for A, we have it to be 600. 600 millimeters our b to be 300 millimeters our p is equal to 900 newton and our theta is equal to um 55 degrees well we have our height which is from here we can generate our height from here this is not sketch drawn our height from here um is equal to 450 millimeters so how do we start this because for question number one they're asking us to find the normal stress in rod a so we are finding the normal stress in this rod that is this rod now in the rod with the force exerting on the force that is the resultant form the rod has been donated by f1 right yes has been donated by f1 and that is very nice to be with so now let's try doing something here so before you start with this what you must know is that you need to resolve the forces and find the resultant forces of each so with a that is before we start with this we are going to use equilibrium condition so for equilibrium we're using equilibrium that is equilibrium condition for equilibrium using the free body diagram here now we need to find the reaction forces right let's find the reaction force so we need to find ax ay uh this can be result. we need to find these resultant forces so first what you must do is that for us to find the resultant forces i advise you to first find the moment now creating a moment you create a moment as where well, there's a lot of forces so if you can see here there are uh, two forces acting here so you are going to create a moment so find the sum of moment at a and with that, we are going to have that it will be F1 sine phi. I'm using this phi, and I'll show you something. Then, and the distance to this is now for us to do that, you need to resolve this in X and Y component. So, when resolving this, you know that this will be the Y component, and this will be the X component, right? So, let's assume that this is FY, and this is this is FY, and this is what fx so in that case the f1 that we are using here represent the resultant forces right so for this we have the f1 sine phi the phi is the angle here now for us to find the angle without using the phi what you must do is that we have our height that's why they gave us our height which is from the c we have our height here so we are going to use the trig ratios to find our phi for our phi we are going to change it to for our file we are going to change it and now do it with um f1 times 36.89 degrees then the distance from here the distance it makes to the a which you are creating the moment at a is 600 millimeters so 600 millimeters and we go on then minus now we move in the clockwise direction. This is the anti-clockwise direction, right? We are moving in anti-clockwise direction, right? So we we took we took our moment to be this. So when you move in this side, the anti-clockwise direction is positive. So we are moving in the anti-clockwise direction. Then we move on. Then since for um the p, we are trying to resolve the p, the p. How are you going to move? You are going to move in the what the clockwise direction to what a. So in that case, the p becomes negative. So we are going to have bracket open. 900 newton then sine the angle given to us is 55 degrees and the distance from p to a we are going to sum this by this which is going to give you 900 millimeters which is equal to zero so in that case we can just equate and find our f1 here and with our f1 we get that our f1 will be equal to 
1843.092 newton so in that case when you find it very correctly that's the answer you should get here now we are not done we should therefore also find as far as we've gotten our f1 we can find our ay and ax so with ay we are going to create the sum of uh, the sum of forces that's sum of forces at what x direction so fx will be equal to now we know that let's look at the x direction this is moving in the x direction ax is moving in a positive x direction um fx i need a reaction force at x what you need to do is i resolve this we have two components fy we have our fy and fx and this also can be generated into two we have px we have px here and py so what you do is now we are going to break it down so we are going to get that we have ax that one there then minus since this is moving in the negative one we are going to have f1 which is cos the angle that we find 36 point eight nine degrees then we are going to have that plus because this also is px we are going to get p which is p is now here is 900 p is 900 newton then Cause bracket open the angle is 55 degrees you close it and what you are going to do is um it's equal to zero so we are going to sum the forces and equate it to zero and in that case when you find it we have our f1 already found which is 1843.092 and we have our ax so in that case we are going to find our ax and then our ax is going to give us 958.0 two five five so that's how we found our ax then in that case we are going to also find our ay so also we need our ay right so with the ay we are going to also find the sum of moment no we are going to find the sum of forces at y direction and that means we are going to have in this case the y is positive right so we are going to have our ay and let's check for this for this side fy is positive is moving the positive direction so plus f1 sine 36.89 then we have another force which is the this force right the p and in this case the p this is moving here and this is moving here so the p we have another one which is moving in the world the negative y direction so we are going to have minus right uh, minus sign this is very important bracket open 900 newton then you close the bracket you're gonna have sine 55 degrees you close the bracket right so in that case when you do this because we are summing this this is the sum of forces in the x direction should be equal to zero we equate it to zero the sum of forces in y direction should be equal to zero we are supposed to create this to zero so that we can find our ay so when you do the substitution because we have our f1 here which is 1843.092 newton we're going to have that our ay will be equal to negative 36 negative 368.618 newton so what we want for the um solution is that we need the f1 for the solution we need ux we need our ay which will help us now what you do now is that after you are done with this we need to find the resultant of what ax and the ay so we find the resultant we know that for finding resultant forces right so resultant forces which is a bar will be equal to the square root of ax squared plus ay squared this is in bracket squared right and in that when you are going to do we are going to have our square root sign we have our um 958.250 squared plus negative 368.618 squared so at the end our resultant force is going to give us 1026.709 newton so we have our resultant force for our a so we whenever they give a for a question like this what you need to do is that find the um the resultant force that's the reaction forces so and after you find their resultant so we have our f1 we have our ax ay now let's come to the question that they're asking us for question number one we are asked to find the normal force 
say find the normal stress in rod what in rod one now we are finding the normal stress in rod one this is rod one so with this rod it means that this rod represents f1 so for us to find the stress you know that for a for a for a we know that the normal stress the normal stress for rod one will be equal to the force which is f1 over the area of the rod so in that case we know that the force that we had was um 1840 3.092 newton all over the area in this case is that we are going to find the area of the rod which is um pi on four bracket open they gave us the diameter of the rod to be five millimeters right and at the end we're going to have our answer to be 93.9 megapascal or 93.9 newton per millimeter squared which is for a so we are done with a for b what they are asking us to do for b is that we should um find the shear stress in pin b we finding the shear stress in pin b for the shear stress which is shear stress also be equal to um the force f1 over the um the area of what pin b and in that case we know that our force that we use was what 1843.092 newton by the area in that case when you read the question very well they are saying that for the for the um pin b is double what for it is what supported by a double share at what pin b so that means that the area that you're going to get you are going to multiply it by two so that means that you're going to have two brackets open pi on four and the diameter given to us was um it was given to us as right for pin b so you are going to have seven millimeters squared and when you do that correctly you're going to have 23.9 megapascal which is b and for c for c for c they are asking us to find um find the shear stress in pin a so we are finding the shear stress in pin a and in pin a we know that there's a force there with a resultant force and there will be an area and they gave us um that all pins are in what millimeters right yes so that means that pin a uh, pin b2 has um a diameter of what seven millimeters but here they say that the pin at bracket a is a single share so that means that whether you're not going to multiply it by two since it's a single share so what you do now is that for c shear stress will be equal to that is the a resultance over the area at pin a and a resultant what do you get for a resultant we have 126.709 newton all over the area for that we have that the area is what high on four seven millimeters squared and when you do that correctly your answer to give you 26.7 megapascal so this is how we do it for the stress